Book of God's Word. Being contemporaneous with the cycle of Fragapati, son of Jehovah as the upper book is of heavenly things, so is the lower book of the earthly administration of God for the same period of time and it is called the book of God's word, because it is of the first descent of God to the earth to establish his word with man through Zarathustra, a man of par. C. E. came God to the send, 8,900 years before the Cosman era. Chapter I. One hear my word, O man, saith Ihuah Mazda. Perceive my utterances in things that have been and that will be. Remember the lapse of time. Open thy understanding to the substance of the affairs of the ancients. 2. Quibble not on names, saith Ihuah Mazda. Nor on places, nor words. All places are my places. All words, my words. All names, my names. All truth is my speech. All fact is my voice. By my commandments shall all the nations of the earth be made to know me and my works. 3. The master of the Ibuans, Samadhi, high god of heaven, whose home was in Mount Vibri, a heaven created in heaven, a thousand miles high. 4. Ibuar Mazda said how shall they know me, I, holy Mazda? They are sealed up. Their souls blind as death. Behold, the king, high ruler of Uz, King Soki. Valorous with a strong sword. Soki. Soki. I call, but he heareth not. I go to the temple. It is closed against God, Ihuar Mazda. 5. Where are the altars of thy God? The place of the holy dance. Soki heareth not. None can hear the voice of Ihuar Mazda. Angels and gods are scouted. 6. O man, canst thou measure swords with thy Creator? O that thou couldst open the curtains of heaven, and see! What is thy little learning? Shall a chick that is not hatch discourse on the philosophy of life? 7. Behold, O man, I have told thee that the natural senses cannot understand spiritual things. But I will reach thee. Thou vain city, ooze! Thou, King Soki! Thy sword shall fall from the hilt. Thy mandates be as a breath blown away. 8. Hear me, O man, saith Ihuar Mazda I opened the door a little, that thou m-i-g-h-t-s-t learn a little about the stars. And now thou art puffed up. Vain boaster of thy knowledge, thou slammest the door in the face of thy master. 9. Thou hast gone in darkness. A driveler to familiar spirits lazy and longing to die. Then I said to thee behold, it is a good world. Go, then, and be wise. Quickly thou wert changed. Bewailing the stupidity of the ancients. What better art thou? Because I delivered thee from darkness, thou killest my prophets. 10. Ihuar Mazda said I make thee free, O man, but thou deniest my person. When I suffered thee to fall in bondage, Thou creest, O God, my God. When I deliver thee into freedom, thou goest with a sword and spear to lay thy fellows in death. 11. Hear, me, O man, what I have done for thee, saith Ihuar Mazda. Of Azu I cleft a rib and stood it up, saying Be thou a man, upright in likeness of thy God. And my voice made thee. What thou art, but was not, perveth I am. I said save thy seed, O man. Ihan stood aloof from the Asuans, and was holy. But thy brother, dwelt with them and brought forth unto destruction. 12. Be admonished, saith Ihuar Mazda. I smoke the earth and broke it as an egg is broken. For I would cut loose the bound in heaven. Then all the tribes of men cried out there is a Mazda. And all power unseen. Chapter E. One in those days when an army captured a large city, slaying the people. They carried back the spoil to Soki, king of Uz, capital of Parisi, and received rewards according to the amount of plunder. The wars were between the different nations of Ihuans. The sacred people, the Ihuans, had nothing. They were unmolested. 2. I said whosoever leaf up treasures in this world, shall find no peace. But ye have built so great a city, ye hope nothing can break it down. Now I will show thee, O king thy city shall prove the weakest of cities. 
I will raise up one man out of the seed of the Indians. And, Uz, the mighty city, shall fall before his hand. 3. Ihuar Mazda, God of heaven, sent certain Luis, highly learned angels, to look around, and afterward he called them and asked what they saw? They said work. Work. Ihuar Mazda said work it shall be. Go ye, holy masters of generations, down to mortals close around the city of Uz. And search ye out seed of the Ihuan race, and by inspiration lead them to the fairest daughters of Ihua, in the city of Uz. And they shall be tempted, and anon a quickened fruit shall ripen in the city, sons and daughters. Again go ye to the Ihans, and by inspiration bring others and have them tempted by the improved fruit. And yet again repeat this method, and in the sixth generation ye shall raise up a son having the gifts of Suez and Sarages, and ye shall call him Zarathustra. 4. The Louise, the angels who were guardians over mortals for such purpose, went and accomplished what had been commanded by God. And the child's mother's name was Tu, and the father's name Lob. Tu was Suez born herself, and was by Simone, an angel, obsessed before she conceived, and during the time of maternity not suffered to wake from her unconscious trance. And by the Louise, her soul was off taken to high heaven to behold its glories, and then to return and inhabit her own body. Thus, the child was born of all light, and in that same day the obsession fled, and to proclaimed within the city that no man was father to the child, but that she conceived from all light, believing, because unconscious in gestation. 5. The learned men cast a horoscope, but found nothing in the stars to alarm the kings, or worthy of credence to the maiden's story. The Louise went before God, saying Behold, a child is born, capable of all light. Then spake God, saying I will come. Go ye and lead the way. 6. When yet the child nursed, Ihuar Mazda spake through the child, whilst its own spirit slept. Then again came the learned men, chief of whom was Asha, son of Zista, learned in a thousand stars and all living creatures, and in the bones of animals no longer living. So Asha spake to two, saying Cunst thy suckling talk? Whereupon God answered him, saying seven. Not the child, but I, even Ihuar Mazda. Think not, O oh man, these small lips utter words prompted by this child's soul. I am come to stay the cruel hand of war. To make man know there is an unseen master. Behold, this child hath no sex. He is an Yeshua Ishu, a passionless birth. 8. To which Asha said can it be this woman hath a man hidden under her cloak, and hopes to evade the just punishment of the king? O, oh, thou harlot! that toldest a shameful tale of conception without a man. Thy lies are now added to others to make good the first. Out of the city, wretch! Or thou shalt be stoned to death, and thy child with thee. 9. Two made no answer, save with a flood of tears. Then spake Ihuar Mazda, saying Hold thy hand on these lips, and perceive thou how I gesticulate with these little hands. Yea, take thou the little form in thine own arms. 10. Then Asha feared, but fain would hide his fear, and so took the child, whilst Ahuar Mazda spake, saying O man, that thou couldst behold the spirit, and would temper thy judgment down to patience and wisdom. 11. Asha said If it be in truth thou art the Mazda of the Ihuan race, why hast thou come in so questionable weakness? What can a child do? Wieldest thou a sword with these little hands? I had hoped to see a god come in stronger shape, and in majesty of a thousand angels, winged, and in flames of fire. 12. Ihuar Mazda said My wisdom is not man's wisdom. My weapons, not arrows and sharp swords. What is great in man's judgment is as nothing to me. What is as nothing to man, I will make great, for I shall overturn this mighty city. Because I am come in peace and love, the city shall be divided man against man, and bloody war run riot in this walled kingdom. 13. Asha said to what end art thou come? For if it be true thou art a god born in this questionable shape, thou hast some motive more than to overthrow the town. I charge thee, then, most precocious youth, tell me what thy purpose is, that justice may be done? 14. 
Indra Mazda said the cities of man are as nothing in my sight. I come to teach man of other worlds, and that the souls of the righteous shall live forever. I come to deliver man from darkness into everlasting light. 15. Asha said thy words are wisdom, or else my sudden surprise hath unfitted my judgment. I will go now, that I may reflect on this wonder. Tomorrow I will come again. Keep this matter quietly. For if it be known that I, of so high a state, have talked intemperance on spiritual things, I will be doomed to death. Chapter 3 1. When Asha had gone, Ihur Mazda spake to two, the virgin mother, saying Take thou thy child away and hide thyself, lest the king have thee and thy child put to death. So two departed with their child, and hid away in another part of the city. 2. Now Asha went direct to Soki, the king, and related what had transpired. When he had finished, the king said according to the histories of the ancients, when a god appeared amongst mortals, there were signs and miracles. Thou hast told me only words. Go, therefore, again to the child and say the king desireth a miracle. 3. Asha returned the next day, but lo and behold, woman and child were gone, and not one of the neighbors knew whither. Asha said if I go before the king with this story, he will have me slain as an inventor of lies. So he returned not to the king. 4. But where two and her child dwelt, there came a maker of songs, by name Chijan, and he spake to the virgin, saying where is the child? She answered he sleepeth in the rack of hay. I will fetch him. So she brought the child from its bed of new hay, fetching straws with its mantle, neither had the straws roots. 5. Ihur Mazda spake through the child whilst its own spirit slept, saying I came to thee, O Chijan. I brought thee hither, for thou shalt frame songs about the virgin's babe. Chijan was frightened, but nevertheless, he said can it be true, in this enlightened age? A miracle. Shall I talk to thee, O child? Then Ihur Mazda said 6. Behold, thou speakest not to the child, but to Ihur Mazda. Take these straws to thy writing box and plant them in new earth, and in one day they shall grow and bear ripe wheat. So Chijin departed and planted the straws, and in one day, they grew and bore ripe wheat. 7. Chijin had sung his songs before the king, and so had permission of the court. And he went and told the king of the miracle. The king said the philosopher, Asha, told me about this child, and I sent him for a miracle, but he returneth not. Thou hast come and said behold, a miracle. What value is a miracle, save to those who witness it? Shall thy king take a thing in belief only? Is not belief the fruit of darkness? Go, therefore, again to the child and bring it before me, that I may see with mine own eyes. 8. Chijin returned to the place, but, lo and behold, virgin and child were gone. Neither knew the neighbors whither but she was concealed in another part of the city. And now there came before her one Ossetian, who was weeping because of the apparent death of his son. To him Ihur Mazda spake, saying Weep not, O man! I have healed thy son and also given sight to thy daughter. 9. Ossetian trembled at such words coming from the lips of a child, and he ran away, finding of a truth his son was healed, and his daughter restored to sight. In his joy he returned to the place, but the virgin and child were gone. Ossetian was hostler to the king, and capable of audience, and so he went and told the king of his good fortune. 10. The king said Asha, the philosopher, told me a fine story of this child, but when I sent him for information, he returned not. Then came Chijin, the maker of songs, telling me what he had witnessed. I sent him to have the mother and child brought before me, but he returneth not. Now thou comest with a miracle, such as were told in the dark ages. Go thou, therefore, and search the city over till thou findest this wonder, and bring it before me. 11. On the next day another man, even the king's brother's son, came before the king, saying this day I have seen such a wonder as would have been marvelous in the days of angels and gods. Behold, a little child hath spoken to me such words of philosophy as made me tremble. And yet, O king, thou knowest I am no coward. My house is hung with a hundred scalps. A, 
and this child already proclaimeth itself Zarathustra in communion with the God, Ihuar Mazda. To me it said Why killest thou the sons and daughters of thy God? Think not that thy multitude of scalps are glory before heaven. Behold, I am stronger with my little finger than Soki, thy king. 12. Soki, the king, said it is enough. Save this mother and child be brought at once before me, that I may behold the truth of these wonders, every male child in Uz shall be cast into fire. The king's brother's wife had a child, and the son's wife had a child, and they foresaw that the decree of the king touched them closely. So there went forth many, searching for two in Zarathustra. 13. But the spirit, Ihuar Mazda, directed the mother to go beyond the gates, and led her far off into the forest of goats, where the tribes of Lystians live by fishing and hunting, and on goats' milk. Ihuar Mazda talked to the virgin, saying Twenty years shalt thou tarry in the forest, fearing not, for thy God will provide for thee. And when thy son shall be larger and stronger than other men, behold, thy God will manifest for the redemption of the races of men who are hunted and slain for the glory of the kings. 14. So it came about that the virgin and her son dwelt in the forest of goats until Zarathustra was a large man and of mature years, and his stature was equal to three ordinary men. Nor could any number of men lay him on his back. But because of his gentleness like a young goat, the tribes of the forest called him the Lamb of God, signifying, strength and goodwill. Chapter Iv 1. When Soki, the king, issued the decree to have Zarathustra found and brought before him, otherwise all the male infants of Uz to be slain, the Lord sent travail on the king's wife and on the king's daughter, wife of Asha, the philosopher, and the two women gave birth that day to two sons, a month before their time, but nevertheless unto life and strength and beauty. Now, according to the laws of Uz, a king could not rescind or change his own decrees, for he had assumed the position of infallibility, whereupon he had doomed to death kin of his kin, flesh of his flesh. 2. Accordingly, after search had been made in vain to find Zarathustra, the king repented of his decree, but knew no way to justify a change of commandment. Asha, hearing of this, came out of concealment, saying to himself now will I go to the king and hold him to his decree, even demanding that he slay me also. So Asha came before Soki, and after saluting, said O king, I have heard of thy strait, and am come to thee that I may counsel thee. 3. The king was angered, and he said Asha, my friend, hear thou thy king thou comest before me, relating a marvelous story regarding an infant son of the virgin who saith she never knew a man. Now. According to the laws of the city of the sun, any man stating for truth that which he cannot prove, is already a judge to death. Shall not the law be fulfilled, because, forsooth, thou art near me in blood? 4. Asha said most assuredly, O king, the laws must be carried out. Are they not the all-highest? For it followeth that man being the all-highest person, his laws, above all else, must never be set aside. Therefore, thou shalt have me slain. Think not I am come before thee to plead an excuse, in order to save myself. Rather let all men perish than that the king's decrees go amiss. 5. The king said thou art wise, O Asha. The laws cannot err, for they are the standard by which to judge all else. And he who hath risen to be king standeth by nature the infallible highest of all things. History hath proven this. But yet hear me, thou who hast wisdom from the movements of the sun and moon and stars the king, being the all-highest, how can he be bound? Cannot he decree new decrees forever? 6. Asha said I will not deceive thee, O king. I know thou art arguing not for me, but for thine own infant son, and for thy daughter's infant son. Neither have I come before thee in prowess, though I love life. But here is the matter if thou change one law, thou admittest that all laws made by men may also need changing. Which is to say, wisdom is folly. How, then, shall the judge, judge any man by the laws? Is it not setting up error in order to find truth? 7. The king said thou reasonest well. Methla this morning, in my walk in the market gardens, when the soldiers were spreading the scalps of their enemies in the sun to dry. Whether or no, 
In ages to come, the weaker nations and tribes of men might not attempt to justify their right to life. And were the kings to admit fallibility in their decrees and laws, no man can foresee the end. For even slaves and servants and women will raise up against the laws, and claim their right to life. Wherein, then, would the earth be large enough for all the people? Yet, wherefore, O Asha, cometh this heartache of mine against killing mine own son? 8. Asha said What are thy sympathies, O king? If thou wert to justify the escape of thy child's death for sympathy, would not my wife and my children justify their sympathy in desiring me to live? Nay, sympathy is the enemy of law and justice. It is the evil in our natures that crieth out for evil. The laws must be maintained. The decrees must be maintained. The king's word must be maintained. No man must suffer his judgment to go higher than the law, or the decree, or the king. 9. Asha said this is a city of the sun. If the city goeth back on its own laws, what will not the tributary cities do? Will not they also begin to disrespect the laws, or say perhaps the laws are in error? This will come to anarchy. To one purpose only can a great city be maintained. To divide the purposes and judgment of men is to scatter to the four winds the glory of our civil liberty. Was it not disrespect of the laws, combined with superstition, that caused the nations of ancients to perish? 10. The king said What shall I do, O Asha? My son hath smiled in my face. 11. Asha said Thou shalt send me and thy son and thy daughter's son, and all male infants to the slaughter's pen, and have us all beheaded and cast into the fire. Otherwise, it will come true what the infant Zarathustra hath said Behold, my hand shall smite the city of Uz, and it shall fall as a heap of straw. 12. Think not, O king, I am superstitious and fear such threats. But this I perceive suffer the laws to be impeached, and every man in Uz will set up to interpret the laws to be wrong and himself right. And thy officers will rebel against thee on all sides, and the glory of thy kingdom will perish. 13. After the city had been searched for thirty days, and the virgin and child not found, the king appointed a day for the slaughter, according to his former decree. And there were ninety thousand male infants adjudged to death, the king's son among the rest. 14. Whilst these matters were maturing, the Lord went to Chijan, and inspired him to make songs about Zarathustra, the infant that was stronger than a king. And also songs about the decree of death to the ninety thousand infant sons of Uz. And the beauty of the songs, together with the nature of these proceedings, caused the songs to be sung in the streets day and night. And the songs, in satire, approve of the horrors, so that even the king could not interdict the singing. Chapter V. 1. When the day arrived for the slaughter of the male infants, not more than a thousand mothers appeared at the place of execution with their infants, the others having risen in the night previous and departed out of the gates, upward of eighty-nine thousand mothers. 2. When the king went to the place of execution, having set apart the day as a holiday, and not finding but a thousand infants present, he inquired the reason, and, having been told, he said can it be that mothers love their offspring more than they respect the decrees of the king. Asha was standing near, having stripped himself ready for execution, and he answered the king, saying 3. Because they love their offspring, is it not the love of the flesh? And doth not the law stand above all flesh? In this matter, then, because they have evaded the law, they have adjudged themselves also to death. 4. Then came Betri, the king's wife, bringing the infant. Betri said Here is thy son, O king, ready for the sacrifice. Asha reason asked well. There must be an all highest, which never erreth. Which is the law of the king. Take thou my flesh and blood and prove thy decrees. What? Why hesitate? If thou swerve one jot or tittle, then shalt thou open the door for all men to find an excuse against the law. Doth not the sun blight a harvest when he will? Yea, and strike dead our most beloved? Art thou not descended from the sun gods? Who will obey the laws if thou, thyself, do not? 5. The king said Behold, it is yet early morn. Let the officers go fetch all who have escaped beyond the walls, 
and both mothers and children shall be put to death. Till then, let the proceedings be suspended. Now there had congregated a vast multitude, anxious to witness the slaughter. And when the king suspended matters, there went up cries of disappointment. And many said when a thing toucheth the king, he is a coward. 6. The king returned for his palace, leaving Asha standing stripped for the execution. And the multitude cried out more as Asha like a king than Soki. Let us make him king. King Soki. We will not have a sheep for a king. And none could stay them, or be heard above their noise. And they ran after the king and slew him with stones, and they made Asher king of the sun and there was not one infant slain according to the decrees. 7. God saith think not, O man, that things happen without a cause, or that all things are left to chance. In my works I go beforehand and plan the way, even more carefully than a captain leath siege to a city. Before Zarathustra was born I sent Ashers to choose out my personages. Think not that Asha made his own arguments. But by virtue of the presence of my Ashers, whom he saw not, he spake and behaved in my commandments, not knowing it. And even so was it with the king's wife. My angels also inspired her to speak before the king. And those that fled out of the city, were inspired by my hosts of angels. 8. God said yet with the king's decree I had no part, for I foresaw he would do this of his own will. And with the multitude and slaying the king I had no part, for I saw they would do this on their own account. Neither would the multitude hear my voice, even though I had spoken to every man's soul. For in them tetracts were the ascendant power. 9. God saith the multitude slew the king because he had gone so far from me he heeded me not. And I made Asha king, because he came so near me my power was with him through my ashers.